Hi, good morning. This is Wills on Wednesday, episode 10. Really excited uh, for our 10th episode. I just feel like it's somewhat of a milestone. So I'm really excited to uh, be here on this Wednesday with you at Atlanta Wills and Trust Law Group. This morning's topic somewhat complements episode six. Where should I keep my estate planning documents uh, or store your estate planning documents, which is what we discussed in episode six. Today we're going to discuss the complementary, what do I do with them now? Who do I tell about them? Who do I not tell about them? Who do I give copies to? And um, just to be super upfront about it, there is really no right or wrong answer to these questions. The fact is, is these are going to be personal questions. They're going to be unique to you. They're going to be unique to your family. They're going to be unique to how you live your life and interact with those involved with your estate plan. So the first question is, um, who do I give copies to? And the short answer is, you give copies to those you are comfortable giving copies to. But it de also depends on which document you're referring to. If you are referring to the will, no copies. Not a fan of copies of wills. Um, there are such things as conformed copies of wills, and we can discuss those in a different episode. And basically, they are your will printed out with zero signatures, and typically stamped into where signatures would be, it would say the word copy. They call that a conformed copy of a will. Um, I'm not even a fan of those running around out there. I think that you should just keep the will, and this is a professional opinion, really clean and just have one original. And of course, um, at my firm, we keep a digital version of your will and provide the original to our clients. So as far as the wills are concerned, keep it clean. Don't make a lot of copies. And why do you not make a lot of copies? Because if you amend it, if you change it, you have to make sure that you're changing every single copy that you've handed out along the way. Uh, you have to make sure you get it back. If you do a completely new will, you have to make sure you get all of the copies back and destroy all of the copies plus the original that you replaced. So copies of the will, no copies in my professional opinion. The powers of attorney, on the other hand, um, typically in the documents, you'll see a statement that a copy of that document is legally valid, legally enforceable. So the question is, is who do you give a copy to? Uh, how many copies should you make? Should you give a copy to someone? And that's really a personal preference. Again, um, there are some pros and cons to both, in my professional opinion. But I give an, I'll give you an example of when it might be appropriate to give someone uh, a copy of the powers of attorney, and we're including health and finance um, in this. And if someone is already helping you with your finances, if uh, one of your adult children is already involved in helping you pay your bills, if uh, you are already involved in helping pay one of your parents' bills and they have a, a solid, well thought out financial power of attorney in place for you to do that, then it, it might be a good idea for you to have a copy of a financial power of attorney or you to provide that to your adult child. If um, for example, you routinely take someone or you have someone who routinely takes you to healthcare care um, appointments and not just that they take you, but and you allow them and want them to be involved in the decision making process and have access to your medical files, then you might have a copy provided to them or you might have a copy of your power of attorney on file with your health care provider. So once you assign your estate, estate planning documents and you have the documents in hand, uh, many times I provide my clients, or not just many times, every time at a certain point, 
I provide my co uh, clients a digital copy of their entire estate plan. Good morning, Anna. Very nice to see you this morning viewing us. Thank you. So with that digital version, with that copy that I provided, I let them know, just because I'm providing you this doesn't mean that you need to give it to someone. However, if you go to the same hospital, if you uh, go to the typically the same medical providers, then what you can do, if you wish to, after you sign your healthcare power of attorney, is you could provide your medical provider next time you go a copy of your healthcare uh, power of attorney on file. And this just would help with if something were to happen and it were an emergency situation and someone needed to access your file on your behalf, your healthcare surrogate or your healthcare representative needed to, to make healthcare decisions, needed to contact that office, it's on file and you've helped that individual help you in your life. So that's one of the things that you can do. Another thing that sometimes is recommended is, is going into your main financial institution and ensuring that there are no obstacles to that financial institution accepting your power of attorney. For example, you could walk into, say, if you, you bank at Wells Fargo, you could walk into Wells Fargo, ask to see the branch manager and say, hey, I just had my estate plan done. I'm just making sure that my financial power of attorney uh, that I have chosen to help me in the event that it's necessary can in fact access my accounts. That doesn't mean that you put them on your account, that they can access them with the financial power of attorney. So these are some things that you can and should consider doing with your estate plan after you sign it. Many times what happens is, is that you'll go into an attorney's office, you'll put all of this time and energy uh, and emotions into this plan, and then you'll walk out the door, you'll stick them in a drawer, and you'll forget what you have in a few months. You might uh, never tell your power of attorney where they're at. You might never let them know what to do with your power of attorney or with your will if something were to happen. And so a good conversation with uh, your attorney about your situation when your, your attorney hands you those estate planning documents is a great idea. Here at Atlanta Wills and Trust Law Group, um, we provide a, a, a guidepost to our clients as they pick up their original estate planning documents. And then what we have begun doing, because we have noticed that this is super helpful for our clients, is reaching out to our clients about a month later and providing them some helpful uh, guides lists to say this is what you can, should and can do with your documents now. This is what you can include with your documents now to help those who need to help you use that plan in the future. So again, the estate planning is about the gift of choices and the gift of the plan to those that you love. So ensuring that what you do with your estate plan after it's signed is also part of your plan with your attorney. So this is Amy Rafeka signing off on Wills on Wednesday, discussing what you should do with your estate planning documents after you sign them. And the bottom line is, is have a plan for your plan. Thank you very much for joining me. Wills on Wednesday.